All right, so this is going to wrap up the lesson 8.5, finally. But it's also going to be kind of the um, basis for any kind of equation or word problem that we contend with when it involves quadratics, okay? And so you'll see this show up um, for the rest of this chapter. So we're going to talk about solving equations by factoring. So every time that we're doing this, what's going to change is what the polynomial looks like. The process isn't going to change, okay? So that's why we're going to talk about it today, and we'll touch on it. Like, I'll show you a special problem um, on when, yeah, Wednesday, um, and, but it won't be brand new, new process. It's the same process over and over again. So we're on the 18th today. Happy Tax Day. Thank you, DC, for having a holiday. Okay, so in order to solve an equation, remember an equation has what in it that we haven't seen so far? An equal sign. So when you have an equal sign, that means we want to solve it. But what's going to be strange is we're going to have this quadratic term, perhaps, this squared term, and we don't know how to deal with that. So we're going to have some strategies that will help us. So first thing, before we can show you a process, we need to talk about a property. And this property is very important, and it's called the zero product property. Zero product property. And basically, the zero product property says this. If the product of two or more factors... equals zero, then one or more factors must equal zero. You know, probably one of those most exciting times for very young kids is to come home and they say, I learned multiplication today. I'm like, you did? What did you tell me about it? Ask me what 1 times 0 is. What's 1 times 0? Zero? 0. OK, ask me what 3 times 0 is. Good, what's 3 times 0? Zero? 0. And they go through all the zeros. And ask me what 5,621 times 0 is. What's 5,621 times 0? Zero? 0. And they get this concept of 0 very early on. In order to get an answer of 0, I need to multiply by 0. So, I'm hoping you're going to learn that today, because it will prove to be beneficial to understand it. So that is what we're going to be working on. So basically, 3 times 0 equals 0. At least one of the factors has to be 0 in a multiplication problem for me to get an answer or a product that equals 0. It can be all the factors could equal 0, but that's a really boring problem. Okay? So... What happens for us is we're going to use this notion for uh, solving for variables, okay? We're going to use this notion for solving for variables. Now, I'm going to remind you of a word that we talked about. Oh, I can't even remember what chapter it was. And that's when we figure out what x equals, it has a special name. So that's what we're going to be solving. We're going to be solving for is some sort of variable. So the variable's value has a couple different names. It's called a solution. It's also called a root. And it's starting really at this point when we're dealing with quadratics that the idea of root really becomes important. So you'll be hearing that word quite often. All right, so what we're going to do is kind of go through a process, um, and we'll go through a couple problems, then we'll go back and we'll add some words in what did we actually do. So you're going to see all sorts of different types of equations. So example one, directions are going to say solve the equation. So basically, that's a fancy way of saying, tell me the roots. Tell me what the variable equals. 
and then you're going to check. <clears throat> there comes a point where sometimes your answers will not make sense, and so you're going to eliminate some answer choices, especially when we get into word problems where we might get a negative answer or we get an answer that is not plausible, not won't work. So let's start with some basics where you're just given um, some information and you have to solve. So they'll come in two forms. Number one, they'll come factored. So we have 2d plus 6 times 3d minus 15 equals 0. Now, first off, is this a fully factored polynomial? No. No. What do you notice the first binomial has in common? So a 2 should be factored out, leaving you with an x plus 3. What does the second polynomial or binomial have? A 3. So you should be pulling out a 2 and a 3, or a total of a 6. But that doesn't really matter because the purpose wasn't just factoring for this one. It was trying to figure out what d equals. So in order for me to have a product that equals 0, one of those binomials has to equal 0. The problem is we don't know which one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each factor and figure out what its d value would be because that's a potential answer. Okay. So what you do is you take each factor and you set it equal to 0 because the zero product property says in order to get a product of 0, one or more of the factors has to equal 0. So now we just do regular basic uh, solving equations, and we're going to subtract 6 from both sides in the first one. We're going to add 15 to both sides in the second one. The first one gives me 2d equals negative 6. The second one gives me 3d equals 15. In the first one, in order to get d alone, we're going to divide by 2. In the second one, we're going to divide both sides by 3 we get d equals negative 3, and we get d equals 5. <clears throat> so now what I want to do is to make sure that I'm going to get one of those factors is going to equal 0. So note what happens. If I have 2 times negative 3 plus 6, and that times 3 times negative 3 minus 15, and the question is, is that going to equal 0? Well, I get negative 6 plus 6 times negative 9 minus, bless you, 15. And that gives me 0 times negative 24 equals 0. And as soon as I get one factor that's a 0, then that tells me, yep, that number d equals negative 3 works. So let's try it with 5. So we have 2 times 5 plus 6, that times 3 times 5 minus 15. And the question is, are we going to get 0 as the answer? So we're going to get 10 plus 6 times the quantity 15 minus 15. And we get 16 times 0 equals 0, which, yes, we're going to get a 0. So what that tells me is D equals 5 is also a possible solution. So what ends up with these is we tend to have more than one right answer. So when we have more than one right answer, that's when we use solution set notation and we write the answer in the braces. So we would say the solution contains negative 3 and positive 5. Both of them worked. Notice one binomial I got a value, the other one I got a 0. And then it swapped roles depending on the problem. Okay, so you could say it this way or you could say it in words. The roots are negative 3 and positive 5. Okay, the roots are negative 3 and positive 5. Okay, so that's one way the problems can show up to you, already factored. The next way, not factored. Okay, so let's solve a problem where we have to do a little bit more work. So number 2. Uh, let's have c squared equals 3c. So what do you think the first step in this problem is going to be? Think about what the problem looked like. Think about what we need in order to use the zero product property, because that's, that's the whole point behind this. What do you think? Yeah, we got to get zero on one side, everything else on the other side. So the 
kind of best case is to take everything to where the largest exponent is. So I'm going to subtract 3c from both sides. So we need to create an equation where we have a polynomial on one side and a zero on the other. So we get c squared minus 3c equals zero. Then we need to factor. How can I factor c squared minus 3c? Ah, I look for GCMF, very first thing I look for. So the GCMF is C. So when I divide C out of both of these, it leaves behind a C minus 3. Now, we're back to where we were before, where we're going to take each factor and set it equal to 0. Now, for some reason, people miss this one. How many factors are there? two factors, and I need to set each one equal to zero. The first factor is C. Well, there wasn't a heck of a lot of work for me to do to figure out what C equaled for that factor. It equals zero. The second one I'm going to have to do a little bit of work on. I'm going to add three to both sides, and we get C equals three. So what we're going to do is going to test this out, but here's where I'm not going to test it. I'm not going to test it after I changed what my equation looked like. I'm going to go back to the original equation. That's where we want to test, okay? So we're going to always go back to the original. That way we can catch any mistakes we make. So is 0 squared equal to 3 times 0? So that's our big question. And we get, yep, it sure is. So that says C equals 0 is a good answer. Is 3 squared equal to 3 times 3? and I get 9 equals 9. Yes, so what that tells me is that, yep, C equals 3, that's another solution. So we can say the roots are 0 and 3, or the solution set contains 0 and 3. So you've got two ways that you can write your answer. Okay? Patrick. Because C is a factor, and I have to set it equal to 0. And I get C equals 0. So it gave me the answer straight away without me having to do much to it. Okay? All right, let's do a word problem. Or actually, let's write down some steps. So what's our process for solving equations? Number one thing, what do we need to do? Nope. Number one. Okay. We're going to do inverse operations. So that there is a polynomial on the left. of the zero, of the equal, sorry, the equal sign, and zero on the right. That's job one. Sometimes that job's taken care of for us. Sometimes it's not. So job one is we need it to look like zero product property where we have equals zero. So that's what it looks like. Some sort of polynomial equals zero. That's what we need to do. Then what do we do? That's when we factor the polynomial. Now the polynomial could be as simple as a GCMF. It could be factoring by grouping. which we practice, and it could be other types of polynomials. So factoring strategies. I'm just going to write that. No spoilers. Okay, that's coming up tomorrow. Once we factor the polynomial, what do we do? Go 
Because remember, each polynomial, or each uh, factor had a variable in it. So how did we, what did we do at that point? Factors, call them factors. Okay, so we take our two factors and what do we do with each factor? We set them equal to zero. So we're going to set each factor equal to zero and solve for the variable. Now I'm going to write in here the word root. because that's what these are, roots. Okay, Jackie, Joey, set each factor equal to zero and solve for the variable. Those are going to be the roots. Now, this is your least favorite thing to do because you think it's too time-consuming, but there's going to be times when if you don't do it, you're going to give me something that's not correct. So you do need to check your work. So check solutions in the original equation. Okay. And again, you can write the answer either in solution set notation or in a sentence. Now, when it comes to word problems, you don't get that option. It has to be in a sentence. It has to have context and whatnot. So let's do one word problem, and you're going to get introduced to a type of equation that you're going to see over and over and over and over again. Uh, this is the easier version of it. It's going to get harder, and we're going to discuss it more in detail um, on Wednesday, I believe. Okay, so this is the, the last of the examples. So this one we have Penny. Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to skip some of it, but I'll give you the background. This is a lot to write. They give you some background story. So it's Penny is a fox terrier who competes with her trainer in the agility course. Okay? So within the course, Penny must leap over a hurdle. Okay, so think about what would that jump look like for this dog jumping <coughs> over a hurdle. Okay, so there's my dog, and the path that dog makes looks like a parabola. Oh, you do? Okay. Because <laughs> I'm awesome. <laughs> I just try. <laughs> so anyway... There, any time you have any kind of motion, we just because of gravity pulls us down, doesn't pull us straight down, it's a gradual pull down. So we always have this kind of parabola shape going on. Uh, we throw something in the air, we shoot something in the air, we jump over something, it's always this shape. So as she jumps over this hurdle, we can model this jump uh, by an equation. So the jump can be modeled by the equation, and here comes the fun one, and we'll t explain the pieces of it later on. Uh, H equals negative 16t squared plus 20t, where H is the height of the leap, of the leap in inches at t seconds. And then it says find the values of t when h is equal to zero. So let's kind of think about that for a moment. So h represents height at certain times. When would height be equal to zero? 
yeah. This is representing being on the ground. So keep that in mind. Okay. So what we want to do is figure out at what time is Penny on the ground. Okay. So we're going to take the equation that they gave us, but instead of writing h equals negative 16t squared plus 20t, I'm going to go ahead and replace h with 0. Because that's what we want to figure out. When is she on the ground? Now, normally the sentence is written, find the values of t when the dog is on the ground. They don't say h equals 0. Then you're supposed to understand that. So keep that in mind. So we're going to say h equals negative 16t squared plus 20t. So lucky for us, we did not have to take that equation and get everything on one side, zero on the other, because by virtue of telling us h equals zero, we've got the polynomial isolated. So we're into section two, step two. What are we going to do now? We're going to factor. Now, me, just personally, I like to rearrange things, so I'm going to put the right side on the left and the left side on the right. Symmetric property of equality says I can do that. So what's the common factor between negative 16t and 20t? Okay, so we have an option. We can pull out a positive 4 or a negative 4. It doesn't matter. So I heard negative 4, so let's pull that out. So I'm going to pull out a negative 4, and there's a t as well, right? So I get the negative 4t times what's left over. So negative divided by negative is a positive. 16 divided by 4 is 4. t squared divided by t is t. Signs are different. 20 divided by negative 4 is a negative 5, and that's it. Now that equals our 0. So we take each factor. How many factors are there? 2. Two. And we take each one, and we set them equal to 0. So we get negative 4t equals 0, and we get 4t minus 5 equals 0. Okay. And so we're going to start solving. This one, we're going to divide both sides by negative 4. This one, we're going to start by adding 5 to both sides. So the first one, we get t equals 0. Does it make sense that at 0 time, she's on the ground? Yeah, yeah she hasn't started to jump yet. Okay. And then on this one, we get 4t is equal to 5. Divide by 4 and we get t equals 5 fourths. Now remember, this is supposed to be in values of seconds, so I'm going to rearrange this and write this as a, um, I can write it as a fraction, so one and a quarter seconds, or I could write it as a decimal, 1.25, okay? Does that make sense, that she could, at the end of her jump, only take a second, one and a quarter seconds to get to the ground? Yeah. She could do that, okay? So we would say Penny, as our conclusion, is, let's see how, if we want to say on the ground. We say Penny's height is zero at zero seconds and 1.25 seconds. Now, I kind of look at the first one as being a, duh, of course she's on the ground before she starts. That makes sense. So she hasn't even begun. She's on the ground. She's not elevating, you know, you know, levitating off the ground and then zooms over it, okay? That's not how it works. She doesn't have a rocket ship listed on her. <clears throat> All right? So let's do one more of these. Yeah, I thought so, but, you know, I know how you guys feel about word problems. So this one is the hop of a kangaroo. Can be modeled by the equation H equals 24 minus 6, sorry, 24T. Forgot that. Minus 16T squared where H represents the height of the hop in meters.
and t is the time in seconds. So basically, they're trying to give me information on how I'm going to be labeling my answer. Find the values of t. So find time when h equals 0. In other words, the kangaroo hits the ground. So what do you think one of the answers will be? Zero. OK, because they're going to start on the ground. OK. <clears throat> so we do the same thing. Now I'm going to rearrange this equation. I'm going to write it 24t minus 16t squared. And I don't need to flip it around. I can leave it just like that. And I'm going to replace h with 0. All right, so I've got a binomial. I need to see if I can factor. Is there GCMF? So an 8 and a T. And that leaves me 3 minus 2T equals 0. So we're going to take each factor, set it equal to 0. Can you guys see how we're always going to get 0 as one of the answers in this type of equation where there's only two terms? And that makes sense. The kangaroo should start on the ground. So this one we divide both sides by 8. This one we're going to start by subtracting 3 from both sides. Now, what is an answer that you could get that would not make sense? A million. Say what? A million. Well, no, that's true. A negative, yeah, because a negative time would be before time. That only works with Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Alicia, you're going to have to clue him in because sounds like he has no idea what I'm talking about, which is really sad. So again, we would not leave time as an improper fraction because that doesn't really make sense. So I could write it as a mixed number. I could write it as a decimal. So we would say the kangaroo. is at a height of zero at zero seconds and 1.5 seconds. I could say zero meters. I guess I could write that in there. Okay? So that's what you get to work on tonight.